Hello, I'm Dr. Maurice Dupre, and in this section we're going to discuss the precise definition of a limit. The precise definition of a limit is somewhat technical, which we'll be looking at. You should keep in mind that the intuitive concept of a limit is the most important aspect of what you should be learning, but the precise definition of a limit is also good to try to understand. Keep in mind that when you first run into the precise definition of a limit, it's probably going to be too complicated for you to understand completely, but keep trying because over time it will begin to make sense. In fact, calculus is really a couple of thousand years old, really going back to Archimedes, but in fact it's only been a little over a hundred years that mathematicians have been able to develop the precise definitions that we need to actually make the concepts of limit precisely clear. Limit of a function. Let f of x be defined on an open interval about x naught, except possibly at x naught itself. We say that the limit of f of x as x approaches x naught is the number l and write limit x arrow x naught f of x equal l if for every number epsilon greater than zero there exists a corresponding number delta greater than zero such that for all x with zero less than absolute x minus x naught less than delta implies absolute f of x minus l less than epsilon. Now what makes this definition so confusing at first is it's not just a simple statement like you're used to dealing with in mathematics. It has what we call quantifiers, phrases like for every and there exists and such that and so on and so forth. This begins to look like a legal document. Well, in order to get an idea of what's going on here, First, what you need to keep in mind is what this for every epsilon there exists a corresponding number delta means in particular is that this delta depends on that epsilon. It also depends on the L and the F another, and the X naught. If I change the X naught and I change the F and the L, everything's going to change. So to begin with, we've got a fixed function. We've got a, we'll fix the point x naught, and we'll fix the limiting L that we're going to try to show as the limit or that we would test to see if it's the limit. And then in that case, the only thing that varies now is the epsilon. As epsilon would be made smaller, the delta will also have to be made smaller, and so you can think of the delta as being tagged by an epsilon, which might make it a little clearer. Now, in picture terms, if I look at the graph of a function, and so let's think of the x and y axes here, and here's some curve representing the graph of a function. Here's the point x naught. Now, at this point, let's imagine that either the value of the function there is L, or the value of the function may be there, or it may not even be defined. It doesn't matter. The point is that the intuitive concept of the limit is that without looking at what happens right here, in other words, if I draw a vertical line right through there, and I say, okay, you can't see whether or not the function has been defined there, or what its value is, it's all been covered up. Can I tell what the value should be? Well, looking at the nearby points, that is x not equal to x naught, and of course that's a consequence of zero being less than that absolute value. You can see clearly from the picture that it appears that this value is what the nearby parts of the curve are telling us the function should have at the point x naught. And so that would be our limiting value L. Okay, now there's a big difference between saying, well, I know a limit when I see it, I just don't know how to define it, and actually being able to define it precisely. And it's this 
complicated logical statement that actually makes that precise. What it means pictorially is, is that if I take a little roadway here that's horizontal, so this is a little roadway, we can think of the line right through the limiting value, y equal l, as the center stripe of that horizontal roadway. Notice that I can find a vertical roadway narrow enough. It's got to be pretty narrow here. So that no matter what x I take down here on the x-axis, when I go up and hit the curve, the entire part of the curve over this little bit, the entire part of the curve that's inside the vertical roadway must, in fact, be entirely inside the horizontal roadway. You can see that if I make the horizontal roadway narrower, then this vertical roadway I've drawn may no longer work, but by making it still narrower, it will work. Well, let me draw a more magnified picture so that you can see it more clearly. So here is the graph of the function. Here's the limiting value y equals l. Here's our x-axis. And so maybe we've chosen an epsilon here. And don't worry about the fact that the picture is a little wobbly. It's the, it's the idea that's important. So here's our horizontal roadway, and there's the center stripe. Here's the curve f. Now, clearly, Here's x naught, the vertical line x equal x naught. Clearly, I can make a vertical roadway whose center stripe is the line x equal x naught, so that when I look to see what part of the curve lies in the vertical roadway, that entire part of the curve also lies in the horizontal roadway. If Somebody comes along and says, well, make the horizontal roadway narrower. Notice my vertical roadway that I've chosen initially no longer works, but I can come along and make the vertical roadway still narrower so that my little narrower roadway now will work for the narrower horizontal roadway. And that's the idea of the for every epsilon. There exists a delta delta here is the radius, in effect, of the little vertical roadway. That's the distance from the center stripe to the edge. The epsilon is the distance of the center stripe to the edge of the horizontal roadway. And so the idea that for every epsilon there is a delta you can think of is that no matter how narrow we make the horizontal roadway, we can make the vertical roadway narrow enough so that the part of the curve that's inside the vertical roadway will be entirely inside the horizontal roadway. Well, sometimes you're going to be given problems where you actually have to find the delta given the epsilon. Let's look at a procedure for doing that. How to find algebraically a delta for a given f, l, x naught, and epsilon greater than zero process of finding a delta greater than zero such that for all x, zero less than absolute x minus x naught less than delta implies absolute f of x minus l less than epsilon can be accomplished in two steps. Step one, solve the inequality absolute f of x minus l less than epsilon to find an open interval a comma b containing x naught on which the inequality holds for all x not equal to x naught. Step two, find a value of delta greater than zero that places the open interval x naught minus delta comma x naught plus delta centered at x naught inside the interval a comma b. The inequality absolute f of x minus l less than epsilon will hold for all x not equal to x naught in this delta interval.